Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video and today I want to go over how we use analyzers to fix some mixing mistakes I tend to make and um, how to kind of clean up your mix uh, using the analyzer that I use which is M Multi Analyzer and I'm also going to show off some cool features and some workflow tips uh, for that particular analyzer. Uh, I've set up a project um, f with a little extract of a song that I've been working on and uh, yeah let's just go over it. Okay, so to, uh, before we really dive into this project, I kind of want to go over my workflow. Uh, if there is a video on my channel uh, talking ab all about how like my main template works and what these out and helper tracks uh, do and why I group everything this way and why I have um, uh, these uh, return tracks here. Um, if you want the full detail of that, uh, I'll hopefully put a link in the description or a card above. Uh, if I forget that, then um, there is a playlist uh, with tutorials and you will find it in there. There is a two-part tutorial series uh, on my workflow. Um, but for now, I'm just kind of quickly going to go over it and kind of uh, show you what everything does. Okay, so I normally work in six groups, um, but for this project, I've only used three of them. I have left out uh, the pads, effects, and vocals group because uh, that wasn't really necessary for this tutorial. Um, so I'm quickly going to delete these. So it's a little bit more clear what's going on. So now we have three group uh, or uh, the three groups, each of which goes to its own return track. And on each return track, we have an instance of M multi analyzer. And what this does is uh, if I open it up uh, really quickly, you can see we also have, or I also have this, um, these instances here. Now these correspond to um, each instance of M multi analyzer. Basically what happens if you put M multi analyzer anywhere, I'm quickly going to close it because I don't want it to um, do anything weird. I'm going to put it down. You can see that now I put down a new analyzer, another instance has appeared and I can give the color and a name. And I stand it in my uh, template. I have each one of them named and colored to represent the same uh, color as the group, at least close to it. The base is a little bit off, but I don't really care about that. It's fine. So that's kind of how I do analyzer, uh, analyzing stuff, because uh, this way you can um, analyze your drums and you can see what your drums are doing versus what your leads are doing versus what your bass are doing and that gives you just a little bit more detail than just your master or just uh, a single selected track. Uh, this way you can actually just compare parts of the track to each other which is really useful and I'm going to show a few use cases of that um, later on in this video. So now that's uh, out of the way. Um, I'm quickly going to play this track and you will notice that it's that there are a few things in there which are um, causing a few problems and we're going to use analyzers to kind of check what's going on and um, see if we can fix those or identify and fix those problems. So let's listen through it and see what we can find. Okay, so that's the track we're working with today. And um, the first thing I heard was that there is um, no side chaining on the main lead. And I know that because I deliberately turned off the side chaining for now. Um, but I often have this problem where um, I'm working on a project, I'm arranging stuff, and um, I have my side chain trigger up here in this group. And I close this and I keep arranging things and I move everything around except the side chain trigger and um, this, the sound is a bit off and I don't really know what's going on because maybe I'm doing some lighter side chaining and it just sounds a little bit off but I can't nail what's going, that, uh, what's going on. Um, what I then 
tend to do um, sometimes is just to go through the track, only turn on the lead sounds, which are the sounds that I'm uh, sidechain the most, and kind of uh, look if there are collisions um, with the kick. So I'm also going to turn on the kick for now. And I'm going to layer the lead sounds on top of that. I'm also going to turn off the master so you can see what's going on. If we go into the wave form here, you can see that there are spikes on the kick. Which is causing problems. So now if I turn the side chaining back on by putting this to zero and um, we go over it. You can see that we get a much clearer um, side chain this way now that we turn it on or a much clearer track here. So uh, this is just an example what you can use it for. There are other cases in which it's not the side chaining, but there are maybe two sounds that are just clashing in um, uh, like in uh, audio where they just um, combine together to create a huge audio spike, just like we had the lead and the kick do. Um, maybe you just haven't yet uh, learned about side chaining and you're just learning from it now. Um, this is a way to kind of check your your elements, if there are any audio problems between them, um, if they're uh, colliding in the audio form. So like multiplying together to create one huge audio spike, which causes nasty uh, spikes and nasty dynamics while listening to it. Again, this was just an example. If I actually uh, need to check my sighting, I just open up this channel and see if there's actual trigger there. That's just much easier. But for the example, I thought that it was kind of neat to see. Uh, the next collision isn't really to do with uh, volume, it's much more uh, uh, collisions in frequencies and for that I'm going to solo the bass and the kick and um, we're quickly going to listen to it. Very simple kick and bass. On, first, on the first um, listen it might not sound uh, very uh, clearly what's going on, especially on headphones, I can definitely not hear that there's something strange going on. But if you're on good speakers, you might hear that the first click of the kick is a little bit different from all the other ones. Again, it's really hard to hear and sometimes it's not there and sometimes it's, it's really there. Um, so what's going on here? If we go back into our analyzer, I'm actually going to put this here and we turn on our kick and bass. You can see that the waveform is a little bit overlapping in some cases. Now a better way to see this is to go to the collisions tab, which is a different tab here. And if I put it back, you can see there is this little red thing down below here, which tells you where frequencies are colliding. So you kind of think of this as a spectrum. As you can see, there's a hertz meter at my cursor and then this is your first um, instance then this is your second instance so here we have our drums here we have our kick and then the lowest thing is basically where are they colliding in the frequency range over time uh, you can also if you want to see it in a little bit of a different way use the sonogram which is just a different representation it shows you again the frequency same graph but over time in this way instead of showing the collisions. And if you really um, dive into this, you can also see it in here. And you might actually be able to also see it in the spectrum, which is over here. Um, but yeah, now that we have our collisions, we can actually fix that. And to do that, I have this little LFO tool here. As you can see, um, what this does is it cuts off the volume of the bass whenever the kick is playing. Basically at any point where I don't need uh, the bass. So um, at the last part of the final bass as well as the, the very first um, uh, 16th note. Uh, we just turn off the volume so that it uh, 
cannot interfere with the kick. So now that I turn that on, that should be um, slightly removed. And as you can see, I can't see any or very little red there. It sometimes peeks through, but that's just so little that um, I can live with that. Finally, what I tend to do is uh, I listen to my lead sounds and I kind of go through and see if there is any frequencies that don't need to be there for either leads or effects or pads or also for drum sounds, specific drum sounds might have some things that shouldn't be there. And in this case, we're going to listen to the leads and we're going to use the spectrum analyzer for this. And I'm going to turn on the leads and turn off everything else and we can kind of go through and see if there's any frequencies that might not need to be there. And as you can see, um, I can't really pause this, but you could see that we have our main bulk over here with like a somewhat fundamental frequency around this range. And then below that, up to the 50 hertz limit, we had some kind of rumble there, especially from our main lead. If I solo this, you can see again, all of this is kind of rumbling. Well, here we have a fundamental. So let's go over and how we can fix that. Um, it's probably due to all the processing I do behind the EQ because I am cutting some of it. Um, but I'm just going to, for now, go up here and slap another EQ on that. I'm going to turn off the high or the low pass and I'm just going to turn the high pass up to about 200 hertz. And now if we go back in there, as you can see, we have a, a cleaner signal here, which is not going to interfere with any of the lower mids or uh, potentially even lower than that, uh, close to the sub, kind of those range in frequencies. Um, the final thing I quickly want to show you, uh, I don't tend to use stereo analytics a lot because in this plugin, it's kind of weird how it's laid out. If you can see, this is um, kind of weird how it's laid out. I don't really understand it this way. I tend to use one of those circular um, spectrum analyzers whenever I do need to do spectrum. Uh, but for me, I think stereo is easy, the best just to judge it on speakers. And um, if I ever need to do some stereo analytics, I will do that on my master channel and just check if there's anything in the master that uh, needs fixing but it's there um, if you want to use it again um, this is all made possible by M multi analyzer uh, I don't know if it's free I do believe they uh, Melda has a lot of free plugins I don't know if this is one of them um, I will leave a link in the description to the plugin if I remember and um, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, uh, feel free to let me know. And I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.